morning, uh, one year ago, uh, President Putin uh, invaded uh, Ukraine. And uh, this was an invasion that the NATO allies warned against with shared intelligence. And on this very stage here in Munich, I called on President Putin one year ago to step back from the brink. But he decided to carry out his plans. And uh, since then, we have seen the most brutal war in Europe uh, since the Second World War. Today, one year after, uh, we can already draw some lessons. One is that we need to support Ukraine. NATO allies have provided unprecedented level of military support to Ukraine. We need to continue and sustain our uh, support, because if uh, President Putin wins in Ukraine, it will be a tragedy for the Ukrainians, but it will also be dangerous for all of us. It will be a message to, uh, uh, to all authoritarian leaders all over the world that when they use military force, they achieve their goals, and uh, that will make the world more dangerous and us more uh, vulnerable. So it is in our security interest to support uh, Ukraine. The other lesson we can learn is the need to invest in our security. Um, even if the war ended tomorrow, um, it has changed our security uh, environment for the long term. Uh, President Putin wants another Europe. He wants a Europe where he controls uh, neighbors. And therefore, we need to continue to invest in our security. And the third lesson we can learn from the war in Ukraine is that um, Security is about more than uh, armed forces. It's about uh, our uh, uh, resilience of our uh, society, so critical infrastructure of energy supplies. And we have seen the vulnerability caused by the dependence on Russian gas. Uh, and we should make sure that we don't repeat those mistakes um, uh, with other uh, authoritarian regimes uh, like uh, China. But the most important lesson to be learned uh, is uh, the importance of North America and Europe standing together. There is no security in Europe without NATO, and the only way to preserve peace, uh, to uh, ensure our security, is to ensure that North America continues to stand together uh, in NATO. Then I'm ready for your questions. Uh, the main battle tank coalition will not reach its target uh, to send two battalions of main battle, leopard main battle tanks to Ukraine. What's your message to countries like Sweden, Denmark and Spain that has not announced to send main battle tanks ever now? At our defense ministerial meeting uh, this week in, uh, in Brussels, uh, the countries that have uh, pledged to uh, deliver uh, main battle tanks met. Uh, they are now uh, discussing how to organize and coordinate uh, their efforts. I have called on allies to do what they can to deliver uh, modern weapons, also armored vehicles and battle tanks. And we are in constant dialogue with allies on these specific uh, deliveries. So I welcome that allies have decided uh, to deliver uh, battle tanks, Germany uh, among them, Poland, uh, the United Kingdom, United States. Uh, but I will not go into the specific discussions or consultations we have with the specific allies. Secretary General, Georgia, 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 Ukrainian people, almost one year after Russia's invasion, and a second question, if I may, um, are you concerned about Russia and China becoming closer? My main message to the people of Ukraine is that uh, NATO allies and partners, we will stand with Ukraine for as long as it takes. Uh, we have provided unprecedented support. We will continue to support Ukraine. And that is the message uh, we are sending to the people of Ukraine, but also to Moscow. Uh, because we cannot allow President Putin to win uh, this war. Uh, it will be a tragedy for the Ukrainians, but also dangerous uh, for us. Uh, we are um, following closely um, uh, the increased and stronger relationship uh, between uh, China and, uh, and uh, Russia. We see that they operate more together, they have uh, exercises together, they have uh, naval patrols, um, uh, air patrols uh, together. And uh, the war in Ukraine demonstrates that uh, security is not uh, regional, security is global. Because what happens in 
uh, Europe uh, matters for uh, Asia, and what happens in Asia matters for uh, Europe. Uh, we know that Beijing is watching closely the war in Ukraine, uh, because if President Putin wins there, uh, it will impact the calculations and, uh, and decisions they will make uh, uh, in Beijing. So uh, uh, when authoritarian powers are coming closer, working more closer together, it's even more important that all of us that believe in democracy and freedom, that we stand together in NATO and with our partners throughout the world. George, you know, wait, 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 wait. Do you think it's possible for Ukraine to win this war on the battlefield and under which conditions? Yes, that's the reason why we are supporting them. Uh, it has been stated again and again from NATO allies that uh, we uh, support Ukraine to ensure that they win and prevail as a sovereign independent uh, nation. Then this war may end at the negotiating table, but we know that what happens around the negotiating table is totally dependent uh, on the strength on the battlefield. So the only way to ensure a lasting uh, just peace in uh, Ukraine is to give them military support today uh, so President Putin understands that he has to sit down and accept terms uh, for negotiations which ensures that Ukraine prevails as a sovereign independent nation. Georgia was the first receive country of Russia in 2008. What will be your message to Georgian people and how ally will support our country? Well, the message to the people of Georgia uh, is that uh, uh, the war in Ukraine is part of a pattern, uh, a pattern that actually started uh, with the invasion of Georgia. Uh, then uh, we have seen the brutal war in Syria. Then we saw uh, the illegal annexation of Crimea. Uh, and then we now saw the full-fledged invasion of uh, Ukraine. So we will uh, continue to work closely with uh, partners like Georgia. Um, and, uh, and that's part of the message uh, uh, now, one year after the war. Political. Political. Who's the yeah, General? Uh, we've heard a lot of concerns about Russian air power and um, the capabilities that the Russian Air Force still has. Are you concerned that Russia could launch an air campaign sometime soon? So Russia has uh, 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 suffered big uh, losses uh, on the ground. Um, uh, armored vehicles, battle tanks, um, and also uh, a lot of personnel. Uh, they have much less uh, losses when it comes to air power, uh, aircraft, uh, missiles, uh, and therefore uh, it is extremely important to ensure that uh, Russia doesn't gain air superiority, uh, control the airspace over Ukraine, and allies are uh, focused on that, not least by uh, continuing to um, uh, deliver advanced air defense systems uh, to, uh, to Ukraine. This is partly about delivering advanced systems to ensure that Ukraine um, can defend uh, and protect their skies, but it's also very much about ensuring that all the systems Ukraine has already received can operate as they should, meaning there is an enormous need for uh, spare parts, for maintenance, for ammunition, to ensure that the air defense systems we have delivered, including uh, modern advanced ones, uh, can operate as they should. And that's, uh, that's one of the messages also from the NATO Defense Minister meeting this week, that the war in Ukraine is now becoming more and more a grinding war of attrition. And a war of attrition is a battle of logistics. It is about supplies, ammunition, including to uh, ensure that the air defense systems are working as they should. Did you receive any assurances or guarantees from Turkey during your visit yesterday regarding the accession to NATO of Finland and Sweden and any update on the timetable? I visited um, Turkey yesterday uh, to express my solidarity and, uh, and express my condolences uh, after the terrible earthquake, uh, which is the biggest natural disaster on NATO territory uh, since NATO was uh, founded. Uh, and. Um, NATO allies are providing uh, significant support to Turkey. NATO is helping to setting up uh, temporary housing and also providing strategic airlift uh, to uh, transport uh, different types of support to Turkey after the earthquake. In my meetings with um, President Erdogan and also with uh, uh, Foreign Minister Shavrojuro, uh, we uh, also addressed the issue of uh, Finnish and Swedish uh, membership. I reiterated my position, uh, and that is that uh, 
uh, the time has come to ratify both Sweden and Finland. Uh, Finland and Sweden have uh, uh, met their uh, obligations uh, under the uh, trilateral um, uh, agreement that was negotiated between Turkey, Finland and Sweden at the NATO summit in Madrid uh, last uh, July. Uh, they have stepped up uh, their efforts to fight terrorism. Uh, Sweden has uh, uh, amended the uh, constitution uh, and they have removed any restrictions on arms exports to uh, Turkey. Uh, so I have made it uh, clear also in my meetings in Ankara that the time has come to, to, to ratify both uh, countries and make them full-fledged members. Uh, then, um, I, I, then, of course, the main issue is uh, not whether Finland and Sweden join at the same time. The main issue is that Finland and Sweden join as soon as possible. Um, and uh, uh, it is, of course, a Turkish decision uh, whether they ratify both protocols or only one protocol. Uh, what matters is that they ratify both as soon as uh, as uh, as possible. Thank you very much. That's all we have time for. Thank you. Thank you.